Fabio, too, this is Robert Trey coming. You guys today, we got a great day on the, today, man. We have a long, long week ahead, man. Hope you guys enjoyed your weekend. We are back to the market. We're gonna do the best that we do, man. And we're just gonna over these levels and of course be ready for the week because you guys have the second week of the year 2024. And again, we have a full trading session. So, of course, you gotta be ready to what's to come. All right. So let me walk you through all these things happening, levels. You know, we have a critical. Things happening on the market. We have some uh, economic events, and especially we have you know good plays that we've been trading. Some of them are in, are you know most of the market is pulling back, but some of them are performing great, and I do believe they will continue to perform great, right? Like CCC again. I did went over this a while ago, and I told you guys that if you guys don't want to miss this trace, you gotta do join the Alpha community. I gave CCC a five point twenty four because it was institutional buying a passive stake, and you know right now is sitting at 6.40, even with a 6.83 high of the day. And I do believe it has small potential. So I'm going to go over this at the end of the video, so stick with me, all right? Now, really quick, what we have on the week? Uh, let's check out what we have as far as economic events. Tomorrow, we don't, we don't really have much. We have consumer credit report. Uh, Tuesday, we have trade deficit. Wednesday, we have wholesale inventories. Uh, and we do have a Fed speaking, John Williams on Wednesday. So... Tomorrow, tomorrow, Tuesday, I don't think we're going to have much going on. I do believe we might have some sort of continuation to what's happening last week, which is more about consolidation, you know, probably small pullbacks. I don't think we're going to have some, uh, you know, rallies yet because the market, you know, most of the stocks out there are shaping for a pullback. I do believe that we have more downside because, you know, we already kind of peak out. So you can understand that Monday is about to obsess, observe, don't jump really quick, you know, don't be anxious, control your emotions, and then you're going to be able to, you know, profit on this, on these trades, right? So jump to Wednesday. I do think that just because we have a Fed speaking, then we might see some more bond volatility on Wednesday, right? Now, Thursday, things get interesting here. If we have jobless report coming out. We got CPI. CPI, it's going to move the market. CPI is one of those events that will change the direction of the market, wherever, if we are Downtrending until then, CPA could, you know, turn around things and we can start again uptrending or actually CPI could be another, you know, make another push down. We can, you know, put us in a lower, lower level, right? And again, could feed the current, you know, the current uh, trend, which is, you know, the downside. I mean, I do told you guys before, pullbacks are necessary for stocks to, you know, continue on uptrending. And regard, remember, you know, the stock has been rallying by several weeks, so it is okay what to see in this pullback, but you have to be ready and play accordingly. Friday, we have PPI, which is another event that moves the market at a certain point. So just keep an eye, and again, this is an important, this is important uh, report as well, right? Checking out, the, you know, the uh, the sentiment, you know, we've been, last week, if you see, we were at 76, and now this week, we're coming out with 74. I do believe that still, the people is still having some sort of, or some sort of hopes that the market will continue to rally. This is why you see that the greed remains similar to what last week. But I do think that this week will be very decisive as far as the market will continue to running or we will have a cool down when I may or pull back, right? So then I think we'll keep an eye on this number because we maybe next week we jump from greed to neutral or even fear if things turn around this week, right? Now, let's really check on what happened on, you know, bigger outlook as far as, you know, charts, to uh, media, I'm oh, sorry, SPY. Let me let me start with SPY. Let's see the weekly chart. Last time that we talked about it, right? I told you guys that we were having this big, big um, ascent triangle, right, on the weekly chart, and I'm gonna show you so we can go over it. And we did have a little, you know, we did broke out a little higher, right? I mean, we were, you see, last week we were talking about. Uh, let me go over here. We were talking about this as in the triangle, which of course broke above, right? We ended up making those 477 highs. But to tell you guys, you know, we had this RSI a certain direction, a certain point that it was suggesting a pullback, right? So we had this pullback. And as you notice, this pullback, well, you know, the base of the triangle, it is pretty much on those previous highs, which was 460s, right? So we go back on SPY, we're pretty much at 468, right? Which that suggests to me that. If we are pulling back, we're more likely we're going to pull back to the same area from previous highs, which is going to be for 60s, right? So that's why I do believe that we still have more room to go, right, to the downside. And maybe when we hit those 460s, we might have some sort of bounce, right? 
and and of course, if the, again if the CPI comes comes up, maybe harder than expected, we may see a major pullback towards four forty seven, four forty five, four forty eight, even four fifties, which is the twenty twenty EMA is pretty much aligning to that area, right? So I do think this is why it's more downside. I'm leaning bearish, but that doesn't mean that we can have bounces, right? Because again, the market is very unpredictable and things can really change anytime, right? But what I really want you guys to keep an eye on and as far as levels, right? As you see here, like I told you the other day, I wouldn't be bullish on SPY as long as we don't break the 470s, right? We do have the MACD on the 4-hour almost about to flip bullish, but that tells me that the bars are stepping in. They're going to try to reclaim the trend tomorrow, in my opinion, right? They're going to try to push it up. They're going to try to reclaim the trend. If they do fail to reclaim this trend, it's for 70s, you know, reclaim the 20 and the 60, May. That, I do believe, if they, if they get rejected from that area, then we might have a major sell-off. Sorry, if we, do, if we do have this pullback, right, go look at the local, look, look at the range. We got a massive room towards, you know, 461s, 460s. And this is why I'm telling you, I do believe that we have more down, you know, more downside coming, but unless we do reclaim the trend. So be ready to react, guys. Uh, again, I'm probably going to be looking to the downside if we do break the 20 MA on the hourly. So 468s is going to be my level uh, for tomorrow. If we do break down, you know, to the downside, and I probably gonna you know, lean for some puts. As as I mean, of course, depending if you know we we reject it from the first seventies, right? Always keep it in eye, and you know, I'm almost drawing my levels and my updates throughout the week. So of course, don't want to miss them out. Join the Alpha community. Um, Tesla. Let me jump really quick to Tesla. Last time that we spoke about Tesla, remember what I said about we had this major downtrend channel coming. And you saw that we already rejected from the top of the channel. The last week, pretty much we came back down all the way down to the 60 minutes. You know, last time was at 248 and Tesla is currently selling at 237, right? So we make all this way towards the 60 minute, right? Now, what did I tell you about the 60 minute? It is a healthy retracement. So what that tells me is that if the virus doesn't bounce now, then we might have major pullback to the downside right now. These 230s, right? This 230 area is very important. So right now we have the 60 minute 231. And as you see here, uh, we might be forming a possible downtrend channel too as well, right? So this is why I said this 231.45, 60 minutes is going to be very important, right? As you see, the RSI is at 50. So that tells me that the weekly still have more room to the downside. Now, I wouldn't be surprised that if the market flush down and pulls back, we can even see the 200s again, right? I mean, we have the 60, the 200 EMA at um 200.70. And if you look at the daily chart, pretty much we ride, we're right at the 200 May, right? So if we do break this level, we got more downside coming. And remember, earnings are approaching, right? Earnings are around the corner. They're reporting on, on, on the 24th this month. And their history is sometimes, you know, Tesla ended up running towards Earnings, or sometimes it's the other way. Sometimes, you know, sells off towards earnings and then it spikes up. But regardless, it's going to be a very unpredictable queue. Remember, the first queue, it is hard for companies. You know, the money's moving around. So usually first queues are not even that great. So understand that we might see more downside, right? Now, as far as levels, what I want you guys to keep an eye for tomorrow, mainly what I'm going to be looking for Tesla is if he does break this 239.86 resistance, I will probably get some calls towards 240s, right? Now, if the things doesn't, you know, turn around as expected and we might have a pullback, then I will mainly be looking for the support, which is at 236.60. And of course, a lower support is going to be at 235.26. Excuse me. And as you see, MACD is already flipping bullish, right? We have some bars stepping in. But of course, I, I told you, as always be wait for confirmation before anticipation, which means that don't jump out of the gun to calls without waiting for that clear breakout, right? Get to levels, play them correctly, and always with your risk management. Because remember, guys, anything can go the other way quick, right? Now, NVIDIA, we talked about this one a while ago, too. Let's go check it out. We had this 
pretty much we've been trading on the same range. You know, we talk about they had a double top, which ended up playing last week. And as you see, NVIDIA was a 490, it was a 495, right? And NVIDIA ended up pulling back all the way down to 472, which was a massive drop. But the bar, the bulls, you know, the bars, they said, no, this is not happening. They literally tapped the 60 minute bounce all the way up to 491. That tells me that even in a red market, the bulls on the semiconductor sector are strong enough to reverse the trend. So that tells me that they are wanting to make new highs. The fact that they bounce from the 60 minute and they almost close about the 20 minute, that tells me that the Nvidia bulls are ready to break for hundreds. And if we do have a green day, I have no doubt they will, right? I mean, you see Nvidia, they move, it moves, what, like $20, $18 a day? That's insane. So you see the massive gains that you can do in Nvidia. It's all about if you play the levels correctly, right? Last, last Friday, usually last Friday, move from 477 lows to 495, man, that's amazing. It's almost $18 a day, right? So you can see this happening on NVIDIA, and I do think that NVIDIA bulls push this high, we should be seeing 500 plus. And I even tell you guys, this is one, one of my long-term investments because I do believe NVIDIA has more to offer this year, right? You guys will remember, we're gonna talk about this in a few months, right? Now, what the levels that you want you guys to keep an eye on NVIDIA? Well, so far, uh, at least for tomorrow, this seems to be a pretty good level. The 493.93 is a big resistance level because it rejected uh, last Friday. And as you see previously, it, it, it was a strong resistance. So as well, something to keep an eye on tomorrow. Now, as far as pullbacks, as far as supports, well, we have a few ones. We have 489.04 and we do have 487.68 supports. So those levels, you want to keep an eye on, mark them out and play them accordingly, right? Because breaking those two, we may test you know 485 which is the 60 may or the 20 may 484 right now as far as the spanish stocks right i talked about this one a while ago fulc you know it was well while ago i even i even remember when i went over this and i told you guys the massive you know potential that this stock had right last time every single time that fulc runs you see how it does it runs towards the 200 may breaks above and then comes back down so i do think that the history is repeating itself in here is currently sitting at 7.53. And if we go look the uh the data on this, we do have more to offer. And if you'll see, so currently, I mean they have um almost 231.89 million in cash, which is a decent amount of cash. I mean, they don't need to do an offerings on this. So I do think that this is why they are running. Now, also keep in mind they don't have a cat that is ahead. Last time, you know, they have a, the phase three enrollment was completed on September last year, and the phase three top lane is supposed to be on this year, which is in 4Q, which is the next December. But usually, stocks tend to run towards this data, right? I'm not saying that you're gonna hold the whole year, but I'm saying that you could possibly hold for you know for short term gains, right? So again, right now it's a 7.44. We may have a pullback, but I do think that this who at some point potentially top 909, which is the 200 main, or even go double digits, right? Again, this is a swing trace, guys. This is, it takes some time One, you know, to play out. Again, this market is being, you know, very difficult right now. Pullbacks that happen, but I do believe if this is the run that always does, it does have some room to run. Remember, the 200 MA is like a magnet on uptrend. So i not not discarding that, you know, my tap those $9, which is a, you know, nice short-term gain. Right now, Sassy, I've been watching this one as well. You know, as this is S A S I, I've been watching this because you see, last week it got up, right? Pretty nice here. And as you see here, I was looking at their filings and I noticed that there was some, there was some acquisition on this. This is why it's just getting my attention because that tells me that insiders are loading up on this one. And I think this, this is why it has more upside coming. Looking at the news, uh, January 3rd which it was uh, last Wednesday, you see there were several forms filled. They were at point uh, shares of this company. Now I was looking on, on the, I was looking right here and you can clearly see here how they were acquisition. They happened, the transaction happened on the 1229 and since then they were acquired almost 20,000 shares, 11,000 shares, almost 1,700 shares. So they are loading on this stock. And if you look on the charts on this, Right, I told you guys how I do love the setups. We have the gap up, then we have a pullback. That was a doji pretty much there and ended up making a higher high after this. So the bars you can see on the bottom bars are steady. 
sorry, are steady and you see are pretty much strong enough to push the stock up. So the RSI is pretty much sitting at 69. I do believe that we have more potential coming on this. We have a possible cap and handle as well for me here. So I'm not discarding the fact that it can pull back to like four or five, four or tens. It is possible. And remember, this is this has a very low float, only 775,000, you know, on float, which is makes it very, very volatile, right? So that means that if it gets a lot of volume, this can really get, you know, spicy and, you know, have huge, you know, runups. Last time we did from three to 6.22, that's over 100% in one day. So can that happen again? It is very likely to happen if there is, you know, the correct volume. But inside is not something. That's why they're loading it up in this. And let's see how things play out, right? Now, what I'm going to be looking at is if it breaks. If it, if it breaks 4.71, you know, we can probably take some position for some scalps there. And of course, you know, a potential run up towards $5. But if it holds above 5, I think that we could possibly run and you know fill this upper weeks to even six dollars plus or run towards the next resistance which is a 5.71 right so keep it now on that guys and of course if there's a pullback again the 405 20 ma right now is holding it up so as long as that one doesn't break i think that we have some good chances you know for mix and run right now again the lead is looking pretty good i think that it is a chance again that runs towards the 200 may if it's possible so let's keep it now on this one guys right and to end the video, of course, tonight, the major one that I talked about earlier, C, you know, 4 C, C4, people call it. Um, this one is the real, real reward is pretty good to us. Again, like I said, I did play this a while ago, right? Don't want to miss this trace. You know, you want to be with us because I go over this trace very often and I'm always early on this trace. And the reason is because I do make my DD on this and I do spend some good time breathing and of course, understanding what happened. The first time that this the four C's, this is the second time because what are the trade C for C4 before? But the second time, again, I noticed that institutions load at 10% passive stake, you know, this this institution, and this was on the 1226. And then you can see here, I learned my students, I was getting a start at 5.24, right? That was 5.26. So that was around here. And you can see since then, C4 has been making a steady rise right almost six dollars plus so even if you were with us you traded with us you got great you had you had a lot of potential to make some good gains on this now if we look at the mega time harness weekly chart is looking pretty good uh it has a nice room that is this upper week to fill to 8.37 so this is why i do think that there is a potential on this one i do think that the bars might have some sort of pullback right maybe to like 580s because the five or 5.63 is report, if we do get some pullback, that we may be, you know, considering to add some dips. But in the long term, or not not long term, but in the midterm, you know, couple of weeks, couple of months, I do think that if this steady remains trend on C4, I think that we can see even you know double digits of this, right? Um, again, the 200 miss at 5.15.27. I don't think we're gonna get that far. Anything is possible in the stock market, guys. Nothing is guaranteed. I remember nothing is financial advice. But what I can definitely tell you is, you know, with a 45.37 million float and there was a 13G fill on January 4, which that was Thursday. And that tells me that there's, you know, more consistent, you know, or there is confidence on institutions to really getting into this. So this is why, guys, I am getting ready to probably ride this one. I mean, this could be a possible ALT once again. You can clearly see here, they got a 4.70, same percent. You know, there are a good amount of these of shares acquired. So it's a lot of patience, guys. You know, this this trace on this market is not really for quick gains. If you're trying to make your reach overnight, it's not gonna happen. If you're trying to make rich in one day, it's not gonna happen. You're all about make some DD. Again, get with us, trade with us. And of course, every you are consistent as we are consistent, you know, you can see how our progress speak for us. So again, if you have any questions, guys, let me know. We can talk about more this this we can even they have a lot to talk, guys, but you know, let's talk in the chat and anyway, anything, just let me know. Send me a DM me. Drop me a comment here on the video, guys. Or in the like, you know, don't forget to like us, subscribe to the channel. We have more more updates through the weekend, more ideas. And of course, let's crush this market, man. This is the first full trading session. So we have a lot to talk and a lot to trade. But you can see here some students making some good money with us. So be part of us, change your life. And of course, let's get ready to crush this month and especially the whole year. All right, guys, so check it out. Link is on the description if you want to join the Alpha community, which I go live trading as well. And I have all my swing trades, all my alerts, all my option guidance, 
everything that you might need to be successful on this market. All right, guys, so take care. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. What's up, guys? This is Juan Pacheco. I'm here today. If you guys want to start making some money and achieving those goals and financial freedom you guys are looking for, you need to start investing in yourself. You need to start investing in knowledge. All right, so join me to the Alpha community. I'll be there with you guys, guiding yourself to the market. And I hope to see you guys tomorrow on the market because I'm going to get you guys get some money. All right, so see you guys.